If you're running a subscription or membership or you're thinking about getting into memberships or subscriptions or maybe you just like playing around with business models, this episode is for you. I've been running subscription businesses for about three or four years now. My current subscription business is called Growth Trackers. It is a marketing experimentation program for creatives who are trying to get predictability in their client pipeline. This episode is about some of the lessons I've learned launching and growing growth trackers. I talk about a lot of the things that I did well. I talk about things I didn't do so well. I share how I recovered from some of those things. And I share some things that you might want to keep in mind if you're looking to run a business this way. If you're watching this on video, you'll notice that I am not at my desk. I am currently in Cedar Key, Florida. And if you watch this on YouTube, you'll see me walk around Cedar Key throughout the entire video. I shot this on location while I'm on vacation down here. And if you're just catching the audio version, you'll hear some wildlife in the background. I'm Lex Roman. I empower creatives to make smarter marketing bets, and you're tuned in to the Low Energy Leads Show. Before we kick this episode off, I do want to let you know about a shift that's happening in the show. I've decided to stop shooting video episodes as a matter of course in Low Energy Leads. I've been shooting a video episode every week for about the last eight, nine months, and I've gotta tell you, it's a lot. So the podcast will continue primarily as audio. So if you're not subscribed on Spotify or Apple or wherever you get podcasts, do that. You can continue to catch a show there. I will still occasionally release video episodes. I'm thinking about doing something a little bit different with YouTube, and I'm also planning to do live streams with you. So if you're interested in sitting in on a live stream, guesting on a live stream, um, I'd love to have you. You can hit me up at lex at lowenergyleads.com. Anyway, stay tuned for those changes on the newsletter. If you're not on the newsletter, get on there. And now let's continue with the show. One of the big mistakes I see people make when they're launching a membership or group program of some kind is that they launch before they know who that is exactly for. And they launch and then there's like crickets. And in my case, one of the things that I did right with growth trackers was that I modeled it off of the needs of my existing clients. So before I launched the membership, I was getting questions and needs from clients I was hearing in meetings. Lex, how do we continue this work? What do I do now? Can we keep working together? And I modeled the program off of those individual people. And that was a huge win because a lot of them joined the membership. They became my founding members. And this is something to pay attention to whenever you create a new offer is who is this for? Not just in a vague sense of like, oh, it's for like mompreneurs or it's for, you know, kids going to college, but it's actually for a specific person, you know how to reach that person. We think we're gonna launch something and people are just gonna stream in to the things that we're doing. And especially in the beginning, you're gonna be having a lot of one-on-one -on -one conversations about who should be in this. When you're really clear about who exactly that is, you know who to reach out to and you know who to sell to. This also helped with my first launch because I didn't burn myself out showing up everywhere. I knew exactly who this was going to. I emailed those people, I invited them to a webinar. It was like a much smaller arena to play in. And that meant that that launch was pretty lightweight and it worked pretty well. I got really good results off of my efforts. Another thing that went really well was starting with proven recipes. So I talk a lot about how you can't rip someone else's playbook. It's not gonna work the same way for you as it worked for someone else. At the same time, you can start with someone else's playbook. You're still gonna have to test it. You're still gonna have to see, does this work for my business? Does it work for my audience? Does it work the same way for me as it did for them? And it's not going to. You're gonna have to modify ingredients in that recipe, but you can start with it. And you can use it as an evidence marker of someone else's business and the closer the closer that business is to the way that your business operates, the more likely it is that that recipe will work for you. So in my case, I had hired a membership coach named Lisa Princic, shout out to Lisa, who helped me form my launch plan. And Lisa had swipe copy for the email sequences that I should send during my launch, and she had a webinar formula. I used both of those things to create my launch materials, and I, I did not overthink it. And this is a classic Lex thing to do and it might be a thing that you relate to too. I did not overthink it. I didn't start all from scratch. I didn't build everything myself. I used her starting place and I made it my own. And that formula, it worked really well for me. I was actually blown away because I was like, I hate this kind of stuff. I hate coming to this stuff. I'll be shocked if this works. It totally worked. It was a really good lesson to take the things that I'm hearing that are working for other people and still consider them as options for me to test myself. Some of the things that were involved in Lisa's formula were things like show the transformation, talk through the success stories, you know, lay out the problem, lay out your solution, emphasize the benefits of your solution. A lot of these things you'll see in marketing stuff everywhere, 
but they were things that I had thrown out years ago in my career and sort of discarded as really formulaic and sometimes that formula can work and so it's just a good reminder to be like yeah sometimes the longer you go in your career the more complicated you make your business the more complex your thinking becomes but a lot of the people that you're selling to their thinking is back where you were when you started so it can be really good to remember that to keep it simple it's almost like why we love AI, why we love ChatGPT. It just like cuts through the complexity sometimes. Now, as you know, because you listen to this show, marketing can get complicated. There's a lot of different factors involved. Messaging, channel, audience, visuals, pricing. There's a lot of things that can go wrong in your marketing plan. And so one of the things that I did right with growth trackers was pivoting from marketing to sales if I'm having a bad time with my marketing tactics. So if the marketing stuff isn't paying off, if the launch isn't launching, if it's not working the way that I expected it to, I pivot and I go high touch. Going high touch has been successful for me every doors open throughout growth trackers. What going high touch means is going through that interest list, going through that set of people who said they wanted to join the membership and rather than using marketing, come over here, open this email, come to this webinar, try this thing, using sales, trying to get them on the phone, emailing them directly and asking what they need. That strategy has worked over and over again as I've been doing these launches and I wouldn't go back to doing it the other way because it's so much more effort to nail your marketing. You're relying on all these quantitative metrics and you're trying to figure out, okay, did this work, did it not work? And you're not talking to anyone. When you actually talk to them, they tell you why they're not joining. They tell you why they didn't open your email. They tell you what they're hesitating about. They give you an opportunity to course correct in a way that you can't do when you're only broadcasting and blasting people information. So if I screw up my launch, if I get too complicated, if I try something new and it doesn't work, what I do is I take that wait list, those people who have expressed interest in growth trackers, I go through them, I look them all up, I invite them to do a call with me. I invite them to sit in on sessions. I just try to talk to them one-on-one -on -one and I don't, I pivot away from sequences, webinars, ads, I pivot away from that stuff. We're beyond that now, we're in sales mode. It works every time. I swear to God, you guys, it works every time. And it is something that we often overlook because we feel like we're supposed to be at some scale state where we don't have to do sales. And let me just be here to remind you that even Facebook does sales, even Google does sales. The biggest companies in the world, they're still doing sales. This next lesson's like a little bit of a course correction where when I launched, I was like, every minute of every session needs to be just power packed with value. These are business owners, they're busy, they don't want their time wasted, like I better be using every single second. What I've learned over the last 16 months is that obviously they want their time well spent. They want value out of coming to the sessions. They don't want sessions to just like lag. They don't want it to be unclear what we're doing in a session, but they also wanna have fun. And this is something that maybe you remember from grade school, your teachers were constantly coming up with gamification and prizes and contests and your teachers in school used a lot of these techniques to get you excited about class, to get you excited about projects, excited about learning and adults need those same gamification mechanisms. We've done some quests and challenges inside Growth Trackers that have done really well and you know members have said to me I didn't know that I needed this. I didn't know that this was so important, that this would really motivate me. I didn't want to do this quest, but as soon as we started, I was super into it and it unlocked this whole thing in my business. And it's really been a lesson to me that we were craving that kind of play in our businesses. It can be really grueling to be grinding away at your business all the time, grinding away on marketing and sales, grinding away on client work, and to be able to have fun with the uncertainty that is navigating entrepreneurship, it's a real gift. And it is a gift that I am able to give them and it is so fun to be able to do that. And it's been a big learning lesson for me to incorporate more play, more space for that serendipity. So I'm in the midst right now of planning our next quest and I'm thinking about other ways that we can gamify growth trackers. I'm thinking about things like credit systems. I'm thinking about how members can get more involved and how that might be valuable to them, not just to me. I'm thinking about how we can incorporate more play, how we can make it more fun to still make progress, still make the impact that we wanna see in our work. This next lesson is courtesy of Karen Borchgravink. Karen was one of the founding members of Growth Trackers early on. And she said to me in a session once, Lex, ideas are not the problem. I'm constantly coming up with ideas. I'm overwhelmed in ideas. 
and people are constantly pitching me ideas, I'm constantly learning new things, and it really was a good wake-up call for me because that's not just true of Karen, it's true of all entrepreneurs. We're constantly seeing what other people are doing, we're going to classes, we're going to workshops, we're working with coaches, and we're getting our eyes filled up with all kinds of things that we could be doing. And the problem is not that we can't think of things to do. The problem is more often that we can't prioritize that set of work, we're not sure which of those things is gonna be most impactful for us, and then we get paralyzed by having too many options. So in the early days of Growth Trackers, I spent a lot of my time teaching different techniques. We did things like email sequences, like partnership building, we did things like pricing strategy. Now that we're several months into Growth Trackers, we spend more of our time prioritizing, breaking that work down, workshopping through it, reflecting on results, digging into data, and actually making an evidence-based plan. So it's less me breaking down, here's what an email sequence is, and it's more, let's look at the last email sequence you ran, let's look at those metrics, let's talk about what you think went wrong here, and let's make a plan about how you're gonna optimize this for the future. I'm also really mindful of how many projects entrepreneurs are spinning, how many plates everyone is spinning, and so we do that week by week now. We used to do a monthly planning and review session. We still do that session, but we also do a weekly session now because it can be overwhelming even to think about the month, right? The month feels pretty big and it feels like you could take on a lot of different things. And what I've learned is that we're pretty bad at estimating how much we can do. And so instead of always looking just month by month, quarter by quarter, we also look week by week. Because when you're just looking at a few days, it's a lot easier to estimate what you can accomplish in those few days. So we now do a Tuesday session where we look back at the week before, and we look forward at the week ahead, and we talk about what you're focused on right now, just for the next couple days. I've noticed that this has made a big shift, not just in like growth tracker stress levels, but also in the actual results that people are driving, I'm noticing that people are able to execute more in their business. Along the same lines as that learning, one of the hardest things that I've had to learn is that members' time management skills impacts their success in the program. So unlike a done-for-you service, unlike when I was working on contract, people have to commit to showing up for themselves. If I take on a web design client, if I take on a design project and I can execute on my own time and then present it to you, that's a very different engagement than you having to come share about your business and workshop with me in a group program. And what that means is that I'm relying on you to manage your time. I'm relying on you to have good prioritization skills. And I don't necessarily teach that in my program in particular. We have broached that topic a couple times because prioritization actually goes hand in hand with lead generation. Like if you can't prioritize and it's pretty hard to book work. But at the end of the day, I, I often have prospective members say to me, Lex, I'm too busy to come to this program. I, I can't figure out how to make this a priority, even though I'm saying to you it's a priority. And current members say the same thing. This is a priority for me, but I cannot seem to find the time in my own schedule. And you know, what people say and what they do, there's always like a little bit of an, a disconnect there. It's not something that's easy for me to solve. It's not something that I can go like knock on their door and say, let's figure this out. Let's look at your schedule. Let's do an audit of your time. I'm not gonna do that in my program. And so it gets in the way of how successful I can be with certain members and how successful they can be with my program. And what that has taught me is that I need to look for that upfront when I'm talking to a prospective member. So when you're coming to Growth Trackers, you're not just coming for the result, you're not just coming because you're excited about the methodology, but I'm also asking you if you have time for this, if you can come to sessions, if that's an appealing working style for you. Because if you say, no, I'd rather not come, I don't like group sessions, or I'd rather give this to someone else on my team, then I know you're not gonna have fun in here and I'm gonna encourage you to seek out a different solution for the same kind of result. This next lesson I'm constantly teaching in the program itself, but it's that it's okay to go high touch. I don't necessarily just mean with sales. I also mean in the delivery of the program. We started by doing all group sessions. There was no one-on-one -on -one when we started Growth Trackers and people would come to sessions or they wouldn't come to sessions. And occasionally I would check in with people if I hadn't heard from them, but for the most part, people came or they didn't come. As the program continued, I started wanting to know what was going on in people's businesses and not everyone would share in group sessions what was really going on or we didn't have time to get into that in a group session. And so, I started reaching out for one-on-one -on -one meetings and I realized that I really liked meeting with members one-on-one. -on -one. I realized that it was important to me to figure out how they were tracking towards results. Sometimes people needed that safe space to say exactly what they felt like was missing or what was confusing to them. 
A lot of members told me that they felt behind other members, which wasn't true, but it was a feeling that many of them expressed. And long story short, these one-on-ones became really important because they became a way for me to one, suss out problems in the program and address them faster, and two, understand that members were having success that they weren't necessarily sharing with me. That was a big insight. I had one member who I sat down with and I was like, you know, is this program working for you? What's going on? And she was like, oh yeah, we've like tripled sales. Like things are going great. And I was like, that's so funny. You haven't said anything. And so I realized that I really needed to get to know members better, that it wasn't sufficient for us to just chat in group sessions, that I needed to have a one-on-one component to the program. So we've addressed this in two ways. One is that I incorporated one-on-one in the program. Many of my members have one-on-one support built into their plan. I now offer that as an option. I have a plan with one-on-one, I have a plan without it. I do quarterly check-ins with everyone in Growth Trackers. So those are one-on-one sessions that are just like, are you tracking towards your goals? And I reach out to people more proactively. I check in with them. Our community manager, Linda, checks in with people. We make sure that people are getting heard, that they're getting seen. If we don't hear from them, we reach out. I, this has now become something that really differentiates my program because people will often say to me that their objection to joining Growth Trackers is that it's like they don't want another course with office hours, which I totally get and I totally agree. And our program's not at all like that. We are working in your business with your business directly in small group sessions in one-on-one formats. And it's kind of unusual for a group program to do that. I think people wonder why I don't just turn that into one-on-one consulting. And it's because the modality is quite different. If you come into a group program and you get some one-on-one support as part of that, you treat that so differently than if you engage me for a one-on-one consulting contract. Like, the, you, the, your approach is just different. There's like an empowerment there in the group side that you're still leading the charge and I'm sort of like your co-pilot in that versus you know me leading and executing things and you sort of like rubber stamping it. So it's a very different modality. It's a totally different way of working. It's one that I love to do, but it doesn't mean that I don't wanna be deeply in your business, in the weeds, looking at the copy, looking at the metrics, looking at the visuals. Like I still love that stuff and I love the way we're working in here. And I have found that members really love that too. There's, a, there's definitely a sweet spot of business owner that wants that collaboration, wants that support, but doesn't necessarily need to hire that out, doesn't need to outsource it, or can't hire that person to be on their team full time. Have you been doubting yourself? Are you forcing yourself into shapes and molds that aren't honest to who you are? Is the male pale stale way of doing things holding you back? Then Glitter Bomb, you need shortwave. Uproar Coaching's on-demand coaching experience for high-achieving, overcommitted women and femmes who want to bring their whole, true, most colorful selves to the table every damn day. Inside Shortwave, friend of the pod, and coach, Carrie Ginsburg is on standby to support you, gently call you on your BS, and celebrate the things that make you, you. When you want support to choose yourself unapologetically and unabashedly, and you don't want the constraints of scheduled conversations, Shortwave is there for you. Another lesson that's actually taken me a long time to learn is that marketing is not done when members join. And this is something that I hear complaints about all the time from entrepreneurs. It takes so much labor to get someone to respond to your email. It takes so much labor to get someone to come to a webinar, to get them to follow you, to get them to subscribe to your email list. Like everything takes so much effort and that there's no exception to that even when people are paying you. And it's important to me that people come to sessions, that they participate, they get the value out of the membership because if they don't do that, they're not gonna get the result that they, that I promised them, right? And they're not gonna have anything to say about it because they won't have gotten the value that they wanted when they signed up. And so we spend a lot of time, Linda, our community manager, and myself, we spend a lot of time trying to understand what makes someone wanna to come to a session? What makes a session interesting? Brandy Cerny's been helping me with this too. Brandy is a branding expert and a positioning expert, and she's been helping me rename sessions and try to capture one, what makes them valuable, why you'd wanna attend, and two, make them sound fun to attend and entertaining to attend. And this goes back to the other lesson I was talking about, about adults wanting to have fun, people still wanting play in their lives, even though they're not kids anymore in elementary school. This is something that we have not nailed. This is something that I continue to wrestle with, what's the right cadence of reminders? Where should those reminders be going? How many sessions should we have a week? What should we be doing in those sessions? Like that is something we are continually iterating. It's probably the number one problem that I'm solving inside Growth Trackers right now. It's like, how do we make these sessions hyper valuable, hyper relevant to members? 
interesting to attend, worth clearing the calendar for. We've done a lot of iterating over that and we do Growth Trackers Town Halls and I'm so grateful to all the members that come to those and the prospective members that come to those and share with me what they're thinking about, what they're working on, because that helps shape the next quarter of Growth Trackers. And we approach this in seasons too, like what, you know, the changes that we're making there are not necessarily set in stone. Soliciting that feedback, paying attention to what members are showing up for, paying attention to what they're not showing up for, that all shapes what kind of sessions we offer, when we offer them, and how we market those sessions. When I started Growth Trackers, I made this really clear decision to close the program right after I launched. So I launched in August of 2022. I did a mini reopen in, in September of 2022 so that I could let a few folks in who didn't get in on the initial founding membership. And then I kept the program mostly closed for all of the fall of 2022. And I was very heads down and focused on those initial members that had joined me so that I could deliver on getting results to them. I had about 10 members in the fall. So between those two launches and between inviting people one-on-one -on -one who had worked with me as clients, I had 10 members throughout most of the fall, 10, maybe 12. The premise is that those members would be so successful that we would be able to share those success stories that they would refer friends or be able to share and amplify the program. And that didn't quite work the way that I expected it to. I really wanted to prove the, the hypothesis of the program. I wanted to make sure that I could fulfill the promise. So it was a good move in some ways. And I do think that that's a good way to operate, to focus on the people that are already with you, people that have already trusted you, that are interested in your help to deliver on something that they need. And that's why on the, on the side of the box, when I launched Growth Trackers, I printed the most valuable audience is the one you already have. What I learned through that fall though, is that one, not all my members were gonna get the level of support that they needed through a membership. Some of them really did need additional one-on-one -on -one support or they needed outside executors that I wasn't providing in my program. There were a couple things I didn't account for here. One is that some members might not execute. They might not execute for a variety of reasons. Maybe they actually do have enough client work, maybe, they're feeling paralyzed or overwhelmed. And what that means is that we're not gonna get the result um, if, if they're not able to execute on the result, right? If it's not a priority, if they're not able to execute for whatever reason, like we're not gonna move forward. So that's not gonna work. <laughs> the other thing I didn't account for is that I might have folks who just are not referral people. Like they're not meeting that many people. Maybe they're not networked with a lot of business owners. Um, you know, I work with a lot of folks for whom networking is a big challenge and that's something that we're working on in Growth Trackers. And so if that's the case, they're not necessarily, you know, meeting a lot of people that they might refer Growth Trackers to, which makes total sense. But it was something that I really didn't think that much about. So now we open the program once a month and it's important that we stay focused on those current members. But it's also important that we have some fresh prospective members coming in because the other thing that I've realized is that all members benefit from meeting each other. And so the bigger that network is, as long as it stays high value for members, as long as it's, you know, quality, as long as nobody's like scamming or spamming people, then it's, it's valuable for everyone, current members included, when new folks join the program. I don't know that I would have, you know, if I was gonna go back in time, I don't know that I would have kept the program closed for as long as I did. I think opening it more often is actually a big benefit to everyone, and again, not just to me and my revenue. I do, however, make a big effort to keep up with current members, to keep up with past members, and to do that before I engage prospective members. And so when I'm running down my to-do list at the beginning of the week, when I'm looking at my month or my quarter, I'm checking who have I not checked in with, who have we not talked to, you know, what's going on in folks' businesses, um, who's already engaged with us, who's already in Growth Trackers. That's really important to me. I do want everyone to get a result out of Growth Trackers. If you show up for you, I show up for you. So, you know, I don't want people to feel left behind or ignored or abandoned in any way. So it's, it's really critical to continue that ethos of current members. The audience that's here is the most important one. Um, but also to, to sort of balance how do we bring in new folks and keep the program high value for everyone involved. This next lesson is that member success is hard to quantify. When I used to work with companies, I used to be leading a growth team and I would pride myself on my ability to change their results, right? I would pride myself on my ability to get them the result that they wanted. And this was very easy for me to prove because I was able to hook up all the data, do all the work, lead the team, and be so involved in it that I could see that impact on a daily basis. And then I could prove it to anyone. Um, and that's how I built my growth career. What I learned running a membership though, is it's not the same. <laughs> because people have to be able to be tracking those results themselves. 
I'm not necessarily gonna go into their business and hook all of that up for them. So in Growth Trackers, I'm pretty involved in member businesses. Like if you come and you wanna work through copy, you wanna hook up Google Analytics, like I'm down to do that with you. But a lot of folks are not gonna do that. Uh, most folks do not take advantage of that part of the program. And so I don't necessarily see like what is actually happening. It's all self-reported. It's like pretty much exclusively self-reported. I had a member pitch me on this idea of like some kind of commission or a reward for the results that they get in the program. I'm very results oriented. The program has a results guarantee um, with a refund attached, right? If you don't get results, you can get a refund. And I believe in that, I execute on that. But the challenge has always been, I'm not executing the work. I I'm not really in charge of those results. Like I'm dependent on the members to drive those results and I'm a partner with them, but I am not in charge of it the way that I used to be when I was contracting and I was leading a project or a team. And without like hooking up and getting into their revenue reports, their analytics reports, the weeds of every test, it's a little hard to track all that and it's a little hard to set that up in the context of a membership style program. Like in order for me to be able to do that much work, it would just bring the cost of the program up so much. I constantly think about this though because it's paramount to me that people get the result that they are promised. And so we stay focus on those results. And the way that we do that is through quarterly check-ins and through one-on-ones with members, through report backs. We have a progress tracker that our community manager, Linda, built out, which is awesome for seeing like over time how things have shifted in people's businesses. We didn't have that before. In the fall, I was sort of just relying on people to self-report voluntarily. And now we ask about it all the time. So we have a much better sense of how things are improving in people's businesses, what's worked, what's paying off, how that overall pipeline and revenue picture is changing. And I do think a lot about how we can closer match the price of the program to the value of the output. And I don't have an answer for that yet. The other thing is that when a member is successful and they have a winning test or a really exciting result, it's hard for me to take credit for that because, you know, it's, there's a combination of factors that are at play there. Many of them are on their side and I play a pretty small role in that. And so it's hard to be like, this is my success. It's really your success. <laughs> like figuring out exactly what the role of the program was in that is, is just hard to do. And so instead we rely on this combination of the metrics, the overall health of the businesses that members are maintaining and growth trackers and growing in growth trackers and we use their feedback, we use their input on what they think the role of the program was in their success. The last lesson that I will give you, and this is a lesson that I've learned but haven't quite learned how to respond to, is to be responsive to the seasons that members are in, right? Be responsive to member needs. When I started Growth Trackers, I had a plan for maybe three or four months of content, three or four months of programming. I had put a bunch of videos in the can. I had done a lot of writing and planning. And my membership coach at that time, Lisa Princik said, Lex, you wanna prepare less, right? You wanna have stuff prepared, but you don't wanna go overboard on the prep because when members join, they're gonna tell you what they need. And I'm so grateful for Lisa for that because she stopped me from over executing in those first couple months. And as a result, I was able to co-create with members more. And with that fall group, that initial founding group of members, we were able to figure out the kinds of things they were already exploring, where they were having questions and challenges. We were able to bring in the right kinds of guest experts for them. We were able to create the right tools for them. And that was really powerful. That's something that we've been able to do every season of Growth Trackers. It's why we do those town halls. It's why I solicit so much feedback from members. Because if the stuff that we're doing in there is not relevant to them, if it's not the things that they need in this moment, if there's a seasonal change, if there's an industry change, if there's an advancement like AI that flips everything on its head, we wanna be able to respond to that. We wanna be able to adjust for that. And we wanna make sure that members feel supported in that time in their business and that we're not dealing with something that's like so irrelevant to them in this moment. And so that idea of being responsive, being adaptive, co-creating with members, that is something we definitely embrace that ethos. And I think it's one of the most important things you can do as a membership operator, but it's challenging in practice, to be honest, because members might have different needs. You know, aside from world changing events, like the global pandemic that we had a few years ago, like it can be hard to unify that and see a pattern in that across across individual member businesses. But it's something that we continue to challenge ourselves to do. It, it continues to be paramount in our program, to be responsive to member needs, to be deeply listening to what they are dealing with from their own industries, from just the internet at large, from digital marketing, and to provide them with the tools and resources and support they need to navigate that. Because as business owners, we're gonna continue to go through wild times and things are gonna change on our businesses. And the business you're running today may not be the business you're running in 10 years. And Growth Trackers is a program that teaches you to adapt through that. Because you can continue to be an entrepreneur 
even if your business evolves, even if your audience evolves, even if your services evolve. And developing that skill is how you stay in that game. And so as the growth game changes, as digital marketing changes, if things get easier, if things get harder, we want to make sure that people have the actual information they need to run their business. What that looks like practically is bringing in guest experts that are in emergent fields, guest experts that are of the moment. What it looks like is working through member challenges that they're dealing with today unpacking a test, unpacking an issue that happened with a client and actually talking through what's going on. What that looks like is embracing new tools, new analytics tools, new tracking tools, so that members can take some work off their plates and automate some things in their business. The problem that we are solving in growth trackers is predictable, sustainable pipelines for client work. It doesn't actually matter how exactly we do that. What matters is that that promise is delivered. So I keep that as our North Star and everything else can change as member needs change. Thanks for listening to this episode. If you're interested in growth trackers, whether you're interested as an operations person, someone who's looking to grow their membership, or you're interested in becoming a member, please get in touch. You can go to joingrowthtrackers.com, learn more about the program, learn more about the members, and you can get something called Growth Trackers Guest Pass, where you're invited to sit in on sessions. You'll get a peek into what we do inside Growth Trackers. If you like this episode, you might also like some of the interviews I've done with people like Chris Valdheims, who runs a law firm legal membership, and people like Taylor Harrington over at Groove who talks about how to build community in your business. You can find those on Low Energy Leads playlist on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple. Until next time, keep your energy low until you know the value will be high.